of you were not with me in eighth grade, but everybody else was. So do you remember the lesson on mystery of black tail candy? Yeah. 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 You, yeah, but you would. I remember we spent a lot of time hammering on it with you in your class. And the idea was this. That in a cliff dwelling Pueblo, there was this room, and some kid was standing in the room. They said, oh, it's like this big. And then they walked into another room, which was bigger. They said, oh, wow, it's like, I forget, like twice as tall. So, or twice as wide or something like that. So, therefore, it must be twice the volume. And that was the beginning of a series of lessons that took us through everything that was in the lesson on Monday. Do you remember that? If you were there in eighth grade? You nod your head, you nod your head. Do you guys remember? You guys don't remember. Yeah, I remember like the thing, but I don't remember like exactly what it was. Oh, okay. Well, here's what, this was all based, this whole lesson was based upon a couple of things. If, for example, I took a segment that had length, so we can talk like this now instead of what we did in the eighth grade, it has a length of x, and I double the segment length, it's how long? So it's two x. Right. So if there's a magnitude of size change, and that's two. My new segment is 2x in length. We're OK. We just multiply by 2. But if I have a box, or a box, I'm sorry, a box. If I have a square on the floor or on the, on the board here, and it's perfectly flat, there has no depth to it. This would be thought of as length for my segment. This would be thought of as area for this square. If it measured x on each side, what's its area? Thank you, Xander. It's x squared. But then, but then we multiply and make it 2x in this direction. 2x in this direction. Now what's its area? How big is this? This is an x squared. And this is an x squared. And that's an x squared. So now it becomes 4x squared. Because we took this one dimension here and we doubled it. But we did the same to this dimension. And here, area is 2D. It's two dimension. Measures in two directions. Length is one direction, one dimensional. And then we can go to this. I don't want to shoot. Can I make my cube? Okay, we're going to, X is going to become a different size. So I can do this big. So, what's the volume? X cubed. X cubed, yeah. That's the volume. But if I go and I make it bigger by a magnitude of 2, then it's got to be twice as wide, twice as deep. But now we got to fill that in. And it's going to be twice as tall. So I'm going to go this direction because it'll be less drawn. Ooh, now we got to be able to see all of these. Let's see like this. And there's one on the bottom. 
How many are on that level? How many cubes? Four. One, two, three, four. How many are on this level? One, two, three, four. So that's a total of how many? Eight. Eight cubes. So that's eight x cubed. And this is how many dimensions? The volume is 3D. So if I made U twice as big, U, yeah, right here. <laughs> Do we just stretch them out? Yeah, that way, and this way, and this way. So if I make him, how much do you weigh? 160. 160 pounds. If I make him twice as big, his volume goes in three directions. What's going to happen to his weight? I can make his weight twice as big, right? And then he's just 320. But if I make him twice as tall, twice as deep, and twice as wide, what happens to his weight? It goes twice, twice, twice. He becomes eight times as heavy. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not as simple as just saying, if you're twice, and that's twice as heavy. Because weight could be thought of as being linear. But if I make his body twice as tall, and twice as wide, and twice as deep, then there's going to be eight times as many Jadens as we start with. Yes? Isn't that kind of like the, the ant thing? Like, because the ant can be, it can't be like huge. Like, it's like you get an ant and like multiply it by like 10 times its height. No, like, because like the weight, like, what, whatever you just said, like, yeah. I, I wouldn't be two times as heavy, but I'd be eight times as heavy. Would yeah, be, you'd be eight times as heavy if we made you twice as high, twice as wide, twice as deep. If we made an ant like twice as big, would it be like, is that like the reason why ants can't be like? Yeah, we can't make ants ten times as big. You can't have super ants because the forces of their weight cannot be supported by the strength of the materials used to build them, what they're made of. It's like they wouldn't have a strong enough bone structure. They wouldn't have a strong enough, yeah. They, they don't have bones, but, bones. but their, their protein <laughs> structure that supports them, that protein isn't strong enough to support big, huge things. We don't see elephants running around on bones made of protein, like an ant. An ant's skeletal structure is a protein-type structure. But protein's not strong enough. So when we start talking about giraffes and people, dogs, cats, Elephants, we need bones. And they can only be so big. Would Jaden be able, like, if you made him, like, twice as tall, twice as wide, all that stuff, would he be able to support himself with his body stuff? I don't know, what's 8 times 160? 1,280. 1,280. So then you'd have, you'd have this human <laughs> standing on two legs that would weigh as much as a large horse, a big horse, a big moose. But he would be bigger, right? And his muscle and mass would also improve. Yeah, the muscle mass might not be a problem, but standing? I mean, do yeah. moose stand on their hind legs? No. Not, not extensively, because it's a lot of weight, a lot of, a lot of force on the bones. Now, we, we've got elephants, we have giraffes, and so we've got some pretty big things out there. But, you know, they have proportionally very, very large bone structure as well. Could we just simply make him twice as tall? No. People like that die really young. They break bones, they have other problems with their heart, is unable to pump the blood as high up as it's got to go and be able to suck it up out of their feet, and the blood doesn't return to the heart, so you have all kinds of issues like that. And so that goes on to a whole other topic. But what we want to understand here is what happens to different dimensions when we change them. And that's what I gave to you guys on Monday with the graph paper, you had a three, <coughs> excuse me, a three by four by five rectangle, and you're supposed to make it three times? Three times. Wider? Yeah. Three times taller and three times deeper. So here, here's what we did with length. 
So if we have a size change of 2, we take our initial length and we multiply it by 2. If we have a size change of 2 in terms of area, because area in this case is equal to x squared, if we want to double the area, this is what happens. So twice, no, 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 da, 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 da. excuse me. If we want to double the size, it's not x that gets squared, it's 2x that gets squared. 2x times 2x. So that becomes 4x squared, which is what we got. It was written there somewhere, I don't know where. Maybe it wasn't, but it is now. Over here, what we did is we took a volume, which was x cubed, and we doubled the dimension. And that dimension is to the third power. So that'd be 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8 x cubed. So that's where you get that. So with your 3 by 4 by 5, that was in your regular shape. I'm running out of board. So your, your 3 by 4 by 5 This is how you get volume right here. You were supposed to make that how many times bigger? Three, Three times bigger. So that's not what I want. That's not at all what I want. What am I doing? So that dimension needs to be made three times bigger. This dimension needs to be made three times bigger. And the last dimension needs to be made three times bigger. So it ends up being 27 times this in volume. Because 3, 3, and 3. If I rearrange the multiplication, 3 times 3 times 3, there's your magnitude. And then you have 3 times 4 times 5. There's your original triangle. So 3 to the third power is 27. And then 3 times 4 times 5 is 60. So you start with 60 and then you end up with 27 times 60. That's where this lesson goes. And that's where the next lesson goes. Except it goes more in a direction of including the units. Do you have any questions so far? Okay. Um, area. The area of a circle. Formula. R squared. Okay. Is, and so is this for both five or both four? Yes. <laughs> for both. For both, okay. Sure. Okay. So you go out and buy pizza. You get all the different sizes, right? 10 inch, 12 inch, if you go to some places. You get a big place down south, you have know, 10s, 12s, 14s, 18s, or something. When the fire weed was open, they had several different sizes. So I'm just going to pick out some random numbers. Let's say you can go and you can buy a 10-inch pizza. Or you can buy a 14-inch pizza. And they put the prices up. Which one's more expensive? It's always the 14. Just a side note, I always get the bigger pizza. I don't know why it is, it comes out cheaper per square inch. But, let's say you're running a business, and you gotta, you know, you say, well, I figured out, it costs me to put together a pizza for ingredients, 
$10 when it's 10 inches in diameter. And then you say, well, geez, I don't want to do all that calculating again for how much it costs to put these things together and put on a pizza and figure out what it's going to cost to cover a 14 inch diameter pizza. I just want to do the math. What should you charge for the 14 inch pizza? $14? The buck an inch, right? No. I mean, you could not yeah, they were, but, would, but, but you might be, you might end up, you know, not charging enough and all of a sudden your 14 inch pizzas don't cover the cost of building one. Is it a linear relationship between the two? In other words, each inch of diameter, is that the same increase in area? We, we did a square thing. If we increased the side of the square by two, did we end up changing the area of the square by two? No, we ended up changing it by two times two. Because if, when we calculate the area of this pizza right here, it's pi times five squared. So I'm going to write down here 25 pi. I'm going to leave it as pi. Otherwise, I don't want to leave pizza. Let's go up here. That was actually fun. Right, well, maybe you need the bubble there. Sure. What's the radius here? Seven. Seven. Seven squared. Forty-nine. So that's 49 pi. Look at that. That pi is twice as big. So if you charged 14, or if you just called that $14 to make that pizza, you would not be doing very well. It should be close to how much? Because doesn't pizza get covered by the area? Yeah, it's not like you're lining up the pepperoni in a row for a dog to eat as he walks through the room. You're just covering the surface in two directions. Even though it's round, you're still doing two directions. Here, let's change the pizza. Let's say you got a nice big one. 20 inch pizza. Pi. 10 squared. So now that's what? It's 100 pi. There you go, four times as much. So that turns into 40 bucks because this is proportional. And what we can do with this is we can say the area of the 10 inch compared to the area of the 20 inch has to be $10 to 40. But in order to find that 40, we have to take into account what we're doing with the area, we either have to calculate the area, or we can just simply say, we're doubling the radius for this one. So this area is pi times five squared. This area is pi times two times five squared, because we doubled the radius, doubled the diameter. Then when we cross multiply, it's a whole different story. We can cancel pi, and then here, this is 25 times this value, so we have 25 times whatever is equal to, this is 100, times 10. No, that's not, what is that? There are two times by 10, 100 times 10. So 25 times what number is equal to 1,000?
I got 25 by taking 5 squared, so what I did is I'm going to cross multiply like this. And where did 2 times 5 come from? 10. 2 times 5 is, now my radius instead of it being 5 is 10. So here's, here the radius is 5, just across here. Yeah. Here it ends up being 10, which is 2 times 5. And is there a specific reason why you wrote it as 2, point, it's two times 5 and not 10? Yeah, I did. Because I want you to see that this is just doubling the radius. But because I'm doubling the radius, and area involves two dimensions, that doubling gets multiplied by itself. It ends up being 2 times 2. So just like my square here, when I started out with x times x is x squared, and then this was 2x, and this was 2x, and then the whole thing is 4x squared, that comes from 2 times 2. It's 4 times as much area. Again, here, even though it's a circle, 2 times 2 ends up being 4 times the cost. So 25 times 40 is going to be equal to 1,000. 25 times 4 is 100, times 10 again to make it 40. Friday. Didn't make it up, make it here Monday. Well, we can go to the so. I'm just, I'm just waiting to see if you have any questions about anything I've said so far. Here? No, there. Good 25 question mark. Oh, because that's, in order to calculate area, that comes from pi r squared the area of the 10 inch pizza is pi 5 squared. The area of the 20 inch pizza is pi times 10 squared, but we wrote 10 as 2 times 5 because we say, well, it's twice the radius. Mm -hmm. So what I'm driving at with this is that the, the big takeaway is when you change the dimension of area, you have to take the size change, in this case it was twice as big, 2, and you have to multiply that by itself. 2 times 2 is 4. If we took Jaden and we, ch we change his size by a factor of, what did we say, 3? 2. 2. We make him twice as tall. So he still looks like Jaden. We've got to make him twice as wide. We've got to make him twice as deep. So if we've got, stand up. So we've got a jade in here, here's 160. Twice as tall is another 160. Twice as wide is 160 here and 160 there. And twice as deep is, well, you've got four of them so far, so we have four more, which is eight. Two times two times two, which is eight. Did you read the fundamental Fundamental theorem for similarity. Open your book. At the very beginning of the lesson from Monday. Yeah. Here's a hint. When I'm gone, 
unless you have somebody like Mrs. Dagan standing in front of you, the, a really a good way to go after this is no matter what the person says or gives to you for work, open up your book and look at it. And uh, what page did you say that's on, Luke? 739. Because yeah, it's all there. Fundamental theorem of similarity. So K is the magnitude of size change. So for length, we multiply by K. But for surface area, we multiply by K squared. Twice as tall, twice as wide or however many times the size change magnitude is. And then for volume, it says k is to the third power, length, width, height. Twice as tall, twice as wide, twice as deep. OK, then. OK, let me give you this. And um, I know it seems really lucrative, because you still have your 12 four in front of you. I'm hoping if you have questions on 12.4, you can go look at them and see what you think of that. I'm not going to abandon it for good. We can come back to it with formal questions, but I'd rather not do that anymore right now. We can do that when I see you tomorrow. Um, I'm going to put 12.5 in front of you, because 12.5 and 12.4 are so very closely related. And then we can just deal with all of that tomorrow. So 12.4 is not going to go away. And for 12.4, does all the stuff you will be gone tomorrow? You're just going to go for well, you guys are going to be, who's all going to be gone tomorrow? One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is, it would be really, really nice if you guys would either tell your teachers or email your teachers. Because honestly, I don't know who is going. You know, there's some people that were on the track team that I talked with and they said, no, I'm not going. And others that said they were going. So it's, yeah, but see, I don't know that. And, and Lindsay doesn't tell me. And so if you guys don't say anything, can I give you this other one? If you guys don't say anything, I don't know anything. And then you're kind of left at the mercy of what's on the website, which is real lucrative right now with this class. So it'll be there well enough before tomorrow morning for you to be able to look at. And if, you, and if it ends up being lesson masters, I'm not positive. But if it does, I will have them to give to you before school tomorrow or during first period. Side, side, side. Mm. And, then, and then what's on Friday? Can I stretch last couple hours? Yeah, I don't have anything on there. It, it will probably be just 12 6 for the rest of this week, is my guess. And then, and then you'll do the video. Like, yeah, I will. But see, when I came back, I got an email from 